morning. I'm Amy Riles with Honestly Horses and this morning I, would, I thought I would just talk about real quick um, managing your single rein on the snaffle bit. I talked about split reins and curb bits the other day and today I'm riding bareback because it's super hot this morning and I have a single rein on a snaffle bit. <clears throat> I thought I'd take this opportunity to just talk about how we hold our reins on the snaffle rein and how we manage riding two-handed. My hands stay level across my horse's withers here, not up or down on one side, and I manage my reins <clears throat> pretty equally by keeping my palms towards my horse's shoulders. So. I don't keep them down in this position. I don't keep them straight up in this position, but a nice natural flowing from my elbow kind of towards my horse's shoulder is, is where I want my hands to be. That's a comfortable position for me. It's also the correct position when you're riding two-handed. It gives you all the mobility that you need to utilize your reins correctly. My hands can stay really soft in this position. I can use my wrist, I can use my fingers. I can lift this way, open, close, move this way. There are all sorts of positions that I can move my hands in when I keep them right about here. Just a few inches above the withers, thumbs sort of facing each other, a little bit upright. You've heard people say candlesticks when you're teaching young riders to ride equitation. This is kind of the position we put the thumbs a little more on top with the opening of our hand here between our index finger and thumb more straight up. And that's to help kids stay in a more correct position until they really kind of sort out where their hands are on the reins and how to use them properly. This is, this is where we teach them. As you progress and as I've grown a little bit, I think, as a horseman, I found what is the sweet spot for me and what works best for my, my position and, and my horses. So I tend to tip my thumbs in just slightly and hold my reins right here. My thumbs are on top, but they're not locked down. That thumb is softly just sitting on the top of that rein. If I need to close that, I can do it. I can just close that rein. If I were to ask for a little bit of a left bend here and shoulder, I might just start to half halt my left rein a little bit. Closing my right rein, as I do that, you can see I have very light contact on my rein. Between my hand and my horse's mouth, there's a little bit of play in that rein, but it's very slight. That's comfortable for her. That's the type of contact she likes and she's comfortable with. I'm going to change rein to my right rein here. A little bit of wiggle in my right ring finger there. Closing my left getting a little bit of a bend right. Nice job. And then I'm going to give her a little slack and show you how I shorten, shorten them up. When we shorten our reins, it's important that we aren't doing this. When we choke up like that, we create a whole lot of shake in that rein. You saw her ears go back. She said, that's not real comfortable. Don't really care for that method. The proper way to shorten your reins is to reach across with your index finger, slide your hand down the rein. That's if you've got quite a bit of distance to go. If I need to really shorten this rein from my hand to her mouth and bring it a lot closer, then I'll reach across here and take up. I'm going to lift her a little bit with that because I took up quite a bit of rein. So I'm going to put a little bit of wiggle in my fingers and ask her to come up to that so that I put that little bit of light contact right back in there, lift her head a little bit. That was really good, Tucky. Nice, okay. I have a habit of getting my hands too high. That's, that's something I work on. Ideally, we wanna keep our reins and our hands down here low. If I need to lift a rein 
move it out here for correction purposes, it's always going to come right back to home base pretty quickly, right back down here where they belong in this position. This puts a straight line from my elbow through my wrist and my fingers to my horse's mouth. If I were just to open those fingers and point and you were looking at me from the side, you would see this straight line that runs straight from my elbow to the side of that snaffle where my rein is attached. And that's what that looks like. If I just need to take up a little bit of rein, I might just very lightly inch my fingers down those reins and I can do that one side or the other. But the important part is to remember that the fingers stay soft. I don't have a locked hand here. I don't have anything that's rigid or stuck. Everything is very soft, very fluid, moving with her, keeping her comfortable and happy where she likes to be in the snaffle. I don't have a drape in my rein, although I can. I can put a drape in that and I can ask her to just walk out and lower her head a little bit and stretch into that. I, I don't like to see a horse when I drop my reins like this and go to the buckle. I don't like to see a horse dive. So if I have one that does that and I'm riding in the single rein or two-handed, what I'll do is I'll do that gradually. So I offer that release gradually. I don't just drop and feed them all if I have a horse that has a propensity to want to really pull into that. I'll just gradually offer it. So I'll start back up here where we were and to help them learn to do that and reach and stretch forward, I'll just start to give a little bit at a time. If she dives or if she were to pull into that, which she would never do, but if she did, I would just simply close my thumbs on those reins and let her run into that. That creates a little barrier that says, ah, you can go to this point, but let's not go past this point. Pretty soon they'll start to recognize that there is a stopping point and they'll look for that before they hit it. So they won't dive forward and just pull those reins through your hands to the buckle the rest of the way. As soon as they feel that release, they'll kindly stretch and reach forward into that. And that's what we want. We don't want a horse that just shoots its nose to the ground, taking that rein with them out of our hands. And to correct that, you can just close your thumbs let your horse hit the barrier a couple of times until they start to figure out, oh, wait a minute, that's not real comfortable when I do that and it feels like I'm doing that, you're not doing that, so maybe I should stop. <laughs> it works pretty efficiently. I've actually had a few horses that were pretty bad at that and um, had learned that behavior and thought it was okay and that's just not fun especially if you've got a kid that rides the horse and the horse is always diving its head forward um, even if it's just to eat grass or something you can sure enough teach them to just lock those thumbs down and let that horse hit that bit a couple of times they'll stop diving forward on their own pretty quickly when it's done effectively so that's managing your single rein, your drape end of your single rein should fall on the off side of your horse. That's where that hangs. Sometimes there'll be a buckle in this. That keeps your buckle, your buckle, if your buckle is on your reins correctly, especially if you're riding in a braided English rein, that keeps it from catching on the bottom of your saddle pads and so forth. I'm riding bareback because it's so hot, so I don't have anything for this to get caught on, but if I did, it would be helpful. There you go. I'm Amy Riles with Honestly Horses. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe for more tips on horsemanship and just thoughts on riding and helpful hints. Until next time, happy trails, y'all.